Welcome back to another one of our learning series. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the creation of navigation buttons. One with no macros and one with macros. Because we want to keep it very straightforward here. There's pros and cons to doing both. But fortunately, Excel really offers us the opportunity for people who are not familiar with macros to just basically assign through a hyperlink a location that helps you navigate between pages on a, on a complex workbook. Sometimes you just need to have navigation. But then again, for those who want more sophisticated, more control over what they do, maybe a macro is a better opportunity or option really to control the navigation and, and control some other aspects of what you might want to do. So we're going to create some sample macro, macros, very simple ones. And by no means does this make you a macro programmer or a VBA programmer, Visual Basic for Applications, but it will give you the opportunity to see how to create one. So here we're going to go overview navigation buttons. We're going to prep our Excel. We're going to create two simple macros, one for navigation and one to do some copy and pasting just to show you what you might want to do. We're going to create some navigation buttons, one being without macros, which we'll assign the hyperlink to, and one with macro we'll assign the macro to. Finally, we'll describe the differences between the two. Hold on while we go to Excel. Hello and welcome back. So here we are in Excel, and this is a multi-tabbed Excel spreadsheet, one with a sheet that's not named. And then I have several sheets in this Excel, and this was really an Excel spreadsheet aimed at HR analytics. So there's a lot of data in here, right? And like if you look from the employee data set that's up on Kaggle, you can see this data file is big. It comes all the way over and it literally goes down like 15,000 rows. So it's, it's a phenomenally big spreadsheet in this regard. But that's not what's important here. What's important here is that you see it's a big spreadsheet with a lot of things going on. And with big spreadsheets, it's hard to really navigate these spreadsheets. So a lot of times what we want to do is we want to put navigation buttons. And there's reasons and times to do navigations. Now these buttons all across the top here are macro driven buttons, which are basically buttons enabled by macros. This one here is a button enabled by a hyperlink. Now the, the, the thing about nav navigating with macros is macros give you a little bit more power than simply assigning a hyperlink. But it's just really a matter of what you want to do. If you just simply want a button to go from one place to the other, a hyperlink is the easiest way to go. You assign it, tell it where you want to go, and you're finished. Pretty simple. However, if you want the user to have more control over something, say to certify the financial results or to certify the analysis and make sure that everybody's looking on the same sheet of music, you know, looking at those kind of things, then maybe a macro is a more important thing to do. Um, so let's look at the difference between these and just how we do it and we'll create some. I, I love the these features here. It starts by going to the insert. So let's let's start maybe in reverse order because those of you who just want to see how to do it and move on. So let's start with assigning a hyperlink. First we pick a shape. The best part is you have lots of shapes and they're kind of fun too, right? You have a smiley face. Let's just take a smiley face. You take a smiley face. Probably want to change the background color a little bit. But maybe we want to use, or you can take a square and we want to sign, we want to go somewhere. Let's say we want to go to analysis by gender. We already kind of have that. So maybe we want to go to identity and role. So what we do is we right click, we choose hyperlink and we go identity and role. And you see here it sells a cell A1. Well, you know, Excel uses, well, uses cell addresses for all its references and relative references. So you simply type in A1 and you say, okay. Take off. It's a big file, so bear with me as it goes through it. Um, you can also edit the text and tell it where you're going to go for people to know, right? Identity, right? And we could probably might want to take advantage of that, and you can center it. That's ah, a little bit better. Center, center. <laughs> so your identity for a little fast face. Of course, it looks like it lines up with identity. Probably want to change that color. But the good thing is, if you click it, go click it. It goes to cell A1 of the identity worksheet. So if I want to see this, so a lot of times when you're deploying these spreadsheets and you want people to do identity, you just simply click identity. You go to cell E1 and you go to identity worksheet, which is good. Also note, it's really good to have your navigation buttons on every sheet. 
because that way they're here, they can click on this to get back to the original sheet. So that way you can have full navigation because sometimes people get really involved and start looking at all the analyses and they want to understand what's going on. We have some cool things in this spreadsheet. Gender analysis, identity analysis, sensor analysis, conditional analysis, geo analysis. And we can navigate between all these sheets. And the way we do it, if we use these buttons, either macro-based or through hyperlink, and you already saw the hyperlink, it was very straightforward. Let's go back to that again. You right click, you go edit hyperlink, and you can choose three things. You can go to a web page or a file. So maybe you have a report or a company blog you wanna to go to. This document, which is this Excel file, and you tell the address or an email address. You can put another button in there, go ask questions. You push that button and you can tell, you know, the email address you wanna go and the person, you know, I have a question, I'm confused. So you can do all these things with the hyperlink. It's very straightforward and you can simply just assign a hyperlink. So let's try that one more time. Insert, shapes, we did the button, or maybe, hmm, oh, a lightning bolt. We just pick different shapes. You can see a square, circle, whatever, in this regard. We right click, hyperlink. We choose sensor analysis. Okay, electricity sensors, I, I'll go with that. Maybe I don't wanna go sell that. Maybe I wanna go sell a 10. We say, okay and we right click, make, make sure our text correct. We put sensor analysis, because you know a lot of companies have Fitbits and those kind of things. Make sure you actually get the right color on the text. You have to make sure you do that. Oh, I see it went down. Weird. Oops, oh, it went right to center. Clicked it by mistake and it went, it was so quick. You also. So you can see it's an odd shape. <laughs> so as you can see, it's an odd shape and it's a very big spreadsheet with 15,000 rows of data in here. But you can go to sensors and you can do that. So it just depends. You don't have to use lightning bolts, but it's kind of fun for sensor analysis. And you can never, you can do all kinds of shapes and everything like that. We could have just as easily, you know, went through. Let's get rid of that one. I didn't like how that shape turned out. Go back to insert, go shapes and icons, pick a standard square. A lot of people just like it simple and vanilla. Right click, edit text, sensors, oops, edit text, sensor, analysis, probably a little bit more appropriate for this one after all. And then we center it, oops, hit home, and mouse is fast, center, 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 and voila, we have a good, all we have to do is right click, Hyperlink, choose this document, sensor analysis, A, let's call it A20 this time. Say okay, sensor analysis is good. It clicks in, it goes to cell A20, right in the middle of it. You see I can put custom objects in anything you want, right? So Excel is get a lot more flexible nowadays. You can add all kinds of actions. You don't have to use the same symbol in charts, so you don't have to use the same symbol in, in buttons. So you can make things just a bit more modern, a little more caring. So the buttons are there, simple hyperlink, no macros, you could probably create those pretty quickly. Now let's take a moment to examine gender, the navigation buttons using macros. Let's play with these for a second. The first way you need to use a macro, you probably should create a macro. Now in all fairness, the easiest way to do that is just to record. Now if you're a VBA programmer, you can probably just freehand type in the code, but I'm gonna assume people watching this video are probably not those programmers. Maybe I'm wrong, but let's just hope not. So record new macro. And we're gonna call this one, go to, let's go to gender. And there's two macro workbooks in here, but I'm playing with this one. Go to gender. Now it's recording. You simply go to gender analysis, cell A2, and tools, macro, stop recording. So we recorded one macro. Now, before we do anything else, well, let's right click on the button, assign macro, and we can look for, let's see if we have it in here, it's not here because 
Oh, go to the gender. There it is. Perfect. I thought it was another workbook. And you simply say, OK. You click that button and you go to gender. Very effective, right? That was pretty simple. All right, so we've created a macro. We assigned it to a button. We used a hyperlink. We've assigned it to a button. However, you know, it still could be interesting. A lot of times people want to make sure you have final numbers and things. So there's this concept in analysis of certified results. And you probably will protect this cell. And if you get the certified results, what we could do with a macro is let's record a new macro. Tools, macro, record new macro. Certify results. And you can do all kinds of things. You can put logos, whatever, whatever you want to record in here, and then you can protect the workbook. Uh, yes, you can't get spaces. That's a bad thing on macros. They don't like that. Say OK. And then here, we simply go here, Control C for copy, or Command C on a Mac, and go to A1, Control V, Enter, go to the second page, Control V. Well, you have to actually go back and copy it again in this case, but you can do all more. I'm just copying it, there's better ways of doing it. But in this case, I'll just come back, copy it. Enter. And then we turn back to index, cell C1, and just go tools, macro, stop recording. Now, remember, we can easily go through insert, oh, the insert here. And my spreadsheet's slow because it's really big. Then with shapes, I'll pick another shape. We're going to keep it. This shape we're going to keep it pretty vanilla. Like we're certifying. Um, a good certifying question. I'll just use a simple square. And you simply say, right click, edit text, certify results. So maybe when an analyst is done, their responsibility is to certify results by clicking this page. Then by clicking it. So what you have the opportunity to do is to control what everybody sees because you certify the results for a certain date. That way everybody knows what the as is date of the certification is. Assign macro. And you can get much more sophisticated than that. I know that, but this is just um, a learning video. So when you click it, it will just automatically certify the results and return to cell C1. Now you can navigate to those. So you, you've learned how to record a macro, how to assign that recorded macro to a button. And you can see it's different because if you assigned a hyperlink, you couldn't have done the certification date. So there's a reason you might want macro buttons over hyperlinks. Not everything you do is associated with navigating. Sometimes you want it to perform a task in Excel. Like all you have to do is click that date and it certifies. That's important because maybe you have to prepare this analysis, upload the files, acquire the data, get the new analysis done and everything. I mean, the gender analysis is really a cool analysis. You're looking at the different countries, the different departments. You're looking at the average of employee identity here. In this, this data updates every month, so it matters, right? And you can navigate back by using the buttons on the bottom or just clicking the tabs. You can use different shapes or you can sign a hyperlink. Like I said, there's two very different things here. Um, both have their purpose and both are extremely useful. Um, for years, I was using the macro, but it's kind of nice to do the hyperlink and sometimes I just want a button that goes somewhere. And if you just need to be one and done, that's a perfect example of it. But you also saw where it was not very difficult to record a macro and um, assign that macro. That was pretty simple as well. And we're not going to go into the Visual Basic Editor in this video too much because um, it's probably outside the scope of what I'm trying to do today. But thank you for joining this learning video. Remember to subscribe. We're always adding new things. In this case, we've added how to navigate with buttons that have macros and buttons that don't have macros and what the difference between them is. However, here's where I will warn you. There's one big thing you need to remember. If you change the name of a sheet with either method, you come back and you hit gender, Ooh, the one you did the hyperlink on doesn't work. And the one you did the uh, gender analysis doesn't work. The reason they don't work is because you changed the sheet name. 
So that's a very important thing to think about. If you change the sheet name, your macros might not work. If you name your sheets, that'll happen is the name you actually recorded the macro on or the name you did the hyperlink on is what's in the system. So you, you must make sure that your spreadsheet is complete. You can't come back to your spreadsheet and change it at the end. So the buttons and navigation are like the last thing you add to a sheet. So think about this as creating a template. You just want to make sure it's right. So let's get rid of that because you know this template was created before I got to here. I had no business changing the sheet, which also is a good reason. As you can see, now it works. That's also a good reason to make sure you protect your sheets because your users might rename things for whatever reason. So a best practice is to protect the sheets that you, or the, you know, the capability of what they can do and what they can't do in a sheet. You may not want them to, na to name this, or at the very least, just tell your users, don't change the tab names. If you change the tab names, your buttons or macros might not work. It was a pleasure talking to everyone. Just feel free to leave any comments if you have a question.